Hi everyone, and welcome to this step-by-step -step guide on Veeam Backup and Replication. Today, we're going to set up one of the most powerful backup and disaster recovery solutions out there. In this video, I'll show you how to download, install, and configure Veeam Backup and Replication from scratch. Then, we'll create a backup job, and most importantly, learn how to restore virtual machines and files, because a backup is only as good as its recovery. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update on our videos. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like. It really helps the channel. Now let's jump right in and get started with Veeam Backup and Replication. First of all we need to download the software. Open a browser window and visit the Veeam Customer Login Portal. In order to log in, you are going to need an account. I already have an account, so let me just type it here. Under your profile name, you will find the My Account tab. Find the Veeam Data Platform Essentials and click Download. Now, let's get the license file while we wait for the download to complete. Find the license management from the left menu and click on Production Licenses. Select Veeam Data Platform Essentials and click on the Get License Key link. Click Download and now you should download the license file. Now that we have everything we need, let's go on and install the software. Find the files you downloaded and extract the archive. Open the extracted folder and find the Veeam Backup and Replication ISO file. Right click on it and choose Mount. Double click on the setup icon to start the installation. Click on the top option, install Veeam Backup and Replication. Click the browse button and locate the license file you downloaded previously. Verify that the license details are correct. Click next to continue. Just wait for the installation to complete. Now let's go ahead and start the basic configuration. Double click on the Veeam Backup and Replication icon on your desktop. Click Connect to start the application. First of all, we need to add a backup destination for all our backups. Locate the Backup Infrastructure option on the left menu. Next, click on the Backup Repositories at the top. Right click on it and select Add Backup Repository. Choose the Network Attached Storage option. Click SMB Share. Follow this wizard to add a backup destination. For the purposes of this video I have already configured my network storage device. In order to access the destination path, you need to add the path of the shared folder along with its credentials. Just click Next all the way to the end. Let the software configure the new backup destination. Change the configuration backup to the new destination if you like. It is generally good practice to keep the configuration backed up in another location. Now select the Inventory option from the left menu. During this step, we will add a hypervisor server in order to back up its virtual machines. Right-click at the top option, Virtual Infrastructure. Select Add Server. Now you need to select the type of virtual server you are going to use. My server is a Microsoft Hyper-V server. Follow this wizard to add your server to the configuration. Add the server IP address. My server is a standalone Hyper-V server. Add the server credentials. I will add my server credentials. Click Next all the way to the end. The server will be added to the configuration after this wizard is finished. Now if you click on the newly added server at the top left of your screen, the software will populate all of its virtual machines. At this point, we need to create a new backup job. So go ahead and click on the Home option. Right-click on the Job option at the top of the menu and select Backup Virtual Machine. A new wizard will appear. Give a name for your new backup job. Add any virtual machine you want to backup. Give it some time to complete the space calculation. 
Now select the backup repository we configured during step 1. Select the retention policy you like. Follow the next steps and set a schedule for the job. I will keep the default schedule. Click apply and finish the wizard. Right click on the job you just created and click start. This procedure may take a while to complete depending on the data size. Now let's try to restore our virtual machines. I will switch to my hypervisor for a bit and I'm going to delete all the virtual machines. Let me just quickly turn off all the machines and delete them. I will also delete all the virtual machine data, the configuration files and the virtual disks. Switching back to the Veeam server now. Click on the restore button at the top menu and select Microsoft Hyper-V. The restore wizard will appear. Select the restore from backup option. Click on the entire VM restore. Select the entire VM restore option. Click on add and choose from backup. Find the restore point you want to use and expand it. I will select all the virtual machines from that restore point. Select the first option if you want to restore to the original location. Follow the wizard all the way to the end and it will start the restoration process. You can monitor the progress from the running option. Meanwhile, let's monitor side by side what is happening on the Hyper-V server. The virtual machines should start appearing shortly. And there you have it. All the virtual machines are restored. Now let's switch back to our server and see if everything works. I'm going to connect and start the first virtual machine from this list. It looks like everything is going well so far. Now I'm going to start the rest of the virtual machines. So far, so good. All the virtual machines have started. Let's connect to the final two virtual machines and see if they work properly. This looks like a successful restore. All three virtual machines seem to be working just fine. Now let's go back to our Veeam server. In this step, we will try to restore some files directly from the backup. Click on the Restore option at the top menu and select Microsoft Hyper-V. Click the Restore from Backup option once more. This time, click on the Guest Files Restore option. Microsoft Windows. Once again find the restore point you want to use and expand it. Use any VM you want from this backup. I will use VM1. Now select the restore point you want. We will go with the most recent. So, just click Next, and finally click Browse. You can browse the drive now directly from the backup. Locate the file or folder you want and right-click on it. Select Copy to Option. Browse to the destination directory. The folder will be copied there. Give it some time and it should finish soon. Nice. Restore completed. Now let's see if the folder and its files are working. Everything looks okay. The file is working properly. Let us know in the comments below if you had a similar successful experience. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit that subscribe button and if you like this video, share it with someone who might find it useful.